Hey, what's going on? This is Edison Abelard, and in this video, I'm going to talk about how do you go from ZBrush to Moto, specifically for creating retopology, and maybe we'll jump into UVing a little bit. Now, this came about from a conversation I had yesterday with um, a YouTube follower by the, by the name of Shin Kicker, and we were talking about how do you use one tool, what's the best tools to use for both retopology and UV. And personally, you know, I'm absolutely in love with Moto. I recently joined, um, you know, the, the, the community and actually uh, our company, I, I was testing it out for a while. And, you know, this is now our official tool, Moto, um, I say, to, to use for most of our modeling and rendering now because I just loved it so much. I was like, nah, we're definitely switching over. So now we're in ZBrush. How do we go from <clears throat> ZBrush to Moto? Well, as you can see, I have my high res. Uh, I'm going to say high. This is only 150, but there was no reason to go into millions of polygons for this, um, just because it, it, was, it was completely unnecessary. So I actually created this using Dynamesh. And so what I, the process that I normally like to take is, is I like to come in here. I'm going to delete what I had before. Come in here and actually duplicate it. And as you can see, it's actually named high res. I'm going to duplicate this and call it low res. And now, if you're new to ZBrush, this is actually 4R6. And in 4R6, there was a um, Pixel Logic introduced probably one of the best tools. Simple, but one of the best tools. And it's actually Z Remesher, which is, uh, it used to be Q Remesher, but now Z Remesher actually, it's, it's faster, it has a better workflow, and it has a, when I say workflow, I mean um, the flow of our, our topology is going to be so much better using zero mesher. So we're going to keep everything default, and it's going to try to target 5,000 polygons from our 150. So I'm going to run this and let this run. If you have, you know, something that's a little more dense, it might take a longer time, and you might have to actually do this a few times, which we'll actually run this a, a couple of times. So this is just about done. Boom. So as you can see, we have nice, we have our points here, but as you can see, it's actually somewhere where it wouldn't really affect our animation anyways. So it does an absolutely great job of, of you know, creating really nice or a really nice topology. Now, to tell you the truth, I want to use this as a base for my retopology. I don't really want to start off with 5,000 because then I'm going to spend more time deleting polygons than actually you know maneuvering around so I'm gonna take this down I'm gonna now take it down to 2000 and remember it does its best job to create that from the current mesh so now I took the original the current mesh that we the first remesh that we did and I tried to bring it down again to 2000 but eh, didn't do a really good job uh, it's still at um, 2700 so I'm gonna take this down to 1000 and try to get it down just a little less Perfect. So now we have just about 1,800 polygons, and when I come, when I just pan around this, you'll see that still this is a really nice mesh. Uh, it might be a little bit for uh, for games. It's just I personally think we don't need all of these details, uh, especially if we're going into Unity. This might be a sub character. It's not a main character, so we don't want to waste polygons on this particular mesh. But for retopology, it's actually really good. Which if you want, you can try to bring this down a little more. Um, so I brought it down to about 1300. So now what do we do? Well, we, we come into here, we come back into our subtool palette, and we want to export this out now. So with if you're new to ZBrush, the way you're going to go about exporting this is actually you have the save as command, which will save the whole subtool and all of its details. And then you have the export command. So I'm just going to go ahead and just click on export. I already have a, a high res in here. I'm just going to click on the low res and click save. Uh, and if you want to save a high res, you literally, you know, you just click on it and you just save the high res version. But since we did that already, we're not going to go about that again. And now let's jump into Moto. All right, now that we're in Moto, let's talk about how do we begin, right? So first, I want to start off with just importing our high res mesh. So I, I just, you know, um, appended it with the word high so we know which one is high. So now Moto opens up this dialog box. So 
in Moto, what we can do is we can import really, really dense multi-million meshes. And the way we can uh, function and, and uh, use Moto and all its tools without crashing it is by inputting it as a static mesh. Because we already know that this is just for, for shows. We're not in here trying to show you. Um, when I'm not going to edit this mesh. So what I can do now is, is, as you can see, I can move around. And I'm seeing uh, ju just a wireframe view of this. And you can see it's still really dense. It automatically imported in as a static mesh with the name static mesh, but that's not useful to us. So let's just change this to high res, and I'm going to get rid of this uh, this group because it might get a little confusing. So as you can see, this is our, our high quality mesh. Now I can just, um, using a shortcut N, I can create an empty mesh object or a mesh container, and now I'm just going to hold down control click on tab and go to a topology um, area and now what we have is we have our regular to retopology uh, mesh area I can come in here and use the topology sketch I like to start off with that a lot and just come in here and just draw this out and what's great about this is, is that it, it really tries to follow a contour and you can actually choose what you want you know so if I want to use five segments instead uh, you know that's a pretty bad job but you can keep going up to see what will work the best and you know what four actually worked out really well so I'm gonna just drop the tool and I'm gonna use a topology pen now if you didn't see my other video on, on creating uh, retopology with Moto 701 check it out because I go into more detail about how to use the different components now I can go ahead and grab this shift middle mouse click and bring that up and as you can see that's just going to keep dragging that out and and what's amazing about this is, is as, as so long as you're in the actual topology uh, room you can it'll automatically snap to the mesh so I'm just holding down shift and as you can see it's just snapping um, and if I hide this high res you can see it really is snapped into that um, it's snapping pretty much to the vertices or the normals up there we have a little breakage uh, which will happen every once in a while especially if your uh, you know your meshes your cage meshes uh, doesn't have as much detail as it needs so I'm just gonna bring this up and uh, I'm, I'm gonna get a little lazy here and what I'm gonna show you is, is a really cool tool like it's not a tool but it's a functionality that Moto comes with that you know until you use it until you need it you're like why isn't this in every program? Well, I dropped that really bad. It's not really following um, correctly. If I come to the side, you can see that it's not really hugging it, but it's it's functioning. It's it's somewhat functioning. So now that I have this side, you know, done, what I can actually do is now use our regular tools as well. I'm just gonna delete this, um, and you'll see why. So now. This straight line we know doesn't work. If I come to the side, you can see that there's a contour over here, and I'm not I'm not actually up against that contour. So what I can actually do is, is with Moto, I can increase the density of our current mesh, and I'm just going to hit D. And as you can see, it goes ahead and it increases the density. And part of that is is it actually adds um, as I increase density, you can see it's actually starting to hug all across the mesh and of course now I have uh, something that's not really well suited but if you're using it you can just quickly throw on a cage and just literally increase the density of the mesh and you'll get something like that or if you want you can use a topology pen tool and come down here to this mode and add a loop and if we just watch it boom you can see that it all actually snaps down which is all great but we did a low res mesh what can we do with that and why did I export out a low res version well the reason why I did that is is because let's say I, I started this out right this is the best I've ever done you know I'm new to, to doing retopology I'm loving this and I don't want to get rid of it but I don't really want to do the rest of this because it might be a little difficult for me so what I can actually do is I can come back I'm going to go our, our model um, viewport and I'm going to go ahead I'm going to import now I import this low res mesh and I'm not going to import it as a static mesh because I actually want to interact with it in Moto. So it does the same thing, it creates a group and brings it in as 
mesh. I'm going to call this low res. So we have low res, we have high res, and we have retopo. And I'm just going to hide the other one so we can see. All right, so now we have just a regular mesh. We can come in here, we can do whatever we want with it. Uh, I'm going to come in here and just bevel this um, and bring this out. So it's a regular mesh. We can do whatever we want with it. Well, Moto, which I absolutely love, and it sounds so crazy that this was not done before. In every application, you can do this silly thing where you can select a whole bunch of things. So let me just, um, you know what? This area, this one is actually a tough area. I don't want to do this. I don't want to come in here and have to do the retopology in here. So let's go ahead and grab this, and I'm just going to shift and, and press up, and, uh, and that's just going to grow the selection. Go ahead and uh, and just select more of it, and let's come on this other side. Make sure those are selected. There you go. All right, so you don't have to select every polygon, but you can select as many as you want. Um, and I'm just, I'm just going to delete some of these selections. So we're just focusing on this portion because it's a portion I don't want to do. Crazy, I can hit Control C and copy it legitimately copy it. Now I'm going to come to our retopology mesh, right? Remember, all we have here is just this section, and I didn't want to get rid of it because I thought I did an awesome job with it. Control V and paste. I literally am able to just copy and paste from one mesh to another mesh. They don't have to have anything in common. It's just literally copying and pasting. If I took a a cube and that was down here or actually I'm gonna do this because this is absolutely silly let's say I, I come here and I like these two polygons I can copy and paste those two polygons onto this mesh and boom there goes there goes our two polygons now when I come back to our retopology if I go to our topology now everything is in here those two polygons are still there and if I show our high res as you can see everything is still here so I can go ahead now and grab our topology pen and if I want to extend I can extend it will automatically fit to that um, and I know this is our, our center area so I'm gonna grab this and bring that up and let that snap to there you go and as you can see I can just keep doing this bringing it up and instead of starting from scratch I have a nice base that I can I can start off from instead of you know, trying to go through and make all these details, especially in this area. This area could have been a monster trying to, you know, align everything and, you know, get it working just right. But with Moto, we can go ahead and just, you know, literally do a shortcut by just copying and pasting a mesh or a cage that's already here. So that's it for this video. I actually went in pretty deep. Uh, 13 minutes is quite longer than I want to, or 15 minutes is quite long, so I don't want to go uh, much further than that. But you can see that you can jump in here and you can go ahead and, and uh, use your regular retopology tools with a base mesh, so you don't even have to, to do all of the work from scratch. So I hope you enjoy this, and in the next video I'm going to show you a little more about creating the topology, and um, I'm also going to do a little bit of UVing. This is Edison Abelard, and I'm out.